Well, good evening, Facebook people. We are on the, the 18th, I think. No, that's not right. Now look at the wrong scripture. The 18th day of our 40 days of prayer and fasting. Uh, tonight we're going to be looking at Colossians 4 2. Um, and I. I looked it up. I looked up the wrong scripture. I looked up John 1, 1 John 5.14, which, 1 John 5.14, which is, um, which is a good scripture in itself. Here, let me read that one, too. <clears throat> this is from yesterday. Uh, 1 John 5.14 says, Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And uh, and also we're going to read in Colossians as soon as I find it. Which I passed at Galatians, Ephesians, Romans. These are the times you go, man, man, there it is, Colossians. <laughs> Colossians 4.2 says, Colossians 4.2 says, <clears throat> Continue earnestly in prayer, be, being vigilant, and it will, it, and it, with thanksgiving amen um so that's the scripture for today you know as i was reading john uh 1 5 14 um ask anything and god will give it to you um <clears throat> Sometimes it just feels like God's not hearing you or um, things aren't going your way or every time you turn around something else is going on and things aren't going well. That's, you know what, we, we really need to just stop and listen to what God is telling us. Um, and, and I want to say this. That scripture did not say, just pray anything, pray anything in my name and I'll answer it. No, it says, pray anything according to his will and he will answer it. So it, when you're in God's will, you're in, in the things. Um, and I'm going to step out on a limb here and say, if you're praying for a soul, that's God's will. Um, God wants to answer those prayers about salvation and about people coming closer to God and, and about those type of things and you know this week I uh, got a message from my from someone I, I knew I know and uh, it, it really blessed me it, in that they thought well enough of me that they would ask the things that they were asking you know uh, It just so amazes me how many people think that I'm that good of a speaker or that I have something to say that and then listen to me. And I appreciate each and every person that, that does tune in. Um, <clears throat> but you know, when you're, you're, you're sitting, I'm sitting here doing this, I'm not really thinking about how many people are going to be listening? I'm, I'm thinking about two things. One, that I say what God would have me to say. That these words that are coming out of my mouth are from the Lord. 
and two, that I would help somebody, anybody. Um, that somebody would be encouraged, somebody would be lifted up, somebody would um, be, maybe they're in a hard place and they are being lifted up by the words that are coming out of their mouth. And it, you know, to me, it, it, that's what I'm after. I'm not, I know I push different things a lot at the beginning and the end, but um, those are the things I'm after. And right now, we need all the prayer we can get. We need all the interference that God would be willing to, to do with, for us. So, all right, um, <clears throat> as I sit here to think about it, I, I just want to take a moment to pray. Heavenly Father, I just pray right now, Lord. Um, Lord, there's there's a bunch of prayer requests, and, and right now the one that's on my mind is is uh, my cousin and her. I'm gonna call him her significant other. Um, I believe it's his, anyway. Lord, he is going through a really hard time. Um, he is in a really in a, in a not so good place. Um, He's uh, not feeling well, and he's, they've asked for prayer. And there's some tests that are going to be running. But Lord, right now, Lord, I just pray that <coughs> those tests would come back negative, and they would be able to find what is causing the issue, and it would be something simple, Lord. I pray, Father God, that through this, that they would find you, that they would hear your voice. Because ultimately, Lord, no matter what I pray or what, it's put in front of us it's your will that's going to be done whether we like it or don't like it it's irrelevant it's your will so father god i just pray right now lord i pray it right now that that you would open up the doors of heaven and that um you would uh rain down blessings upon them and that you would heal this young man but lord i pray that they would turn to you and no matter what happens lord i pray that they would turn to you and start to serve you 100 percent and lord i just pray for each and every person that's tuning in tonight lord that you would speak to them help them encourage them lift them up let them feel your presence let them hear your words let them know that you <coughs> are right here. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Also, Lord, I pray that the words that come out of my mouth would be your words, from your throne, Father God. And that you would help us, encourage us, and lift us up. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. And uh, today's devotion, it's called uh, In Sunshine and Storm. When there are good times, be happy. But when the times are bad, consider this. God has made the one as well as the other. Therefore, no one can dis discover anything about their future. You know, <clears throat> I, I got to tell you that when things are going good, and it is really super easy to, to praise God. But things aren't going so good. We have a tendency not to want to praise him as much. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> in all things, we need to praise the Lord and, and ask the Lord to help us and encourage us that we would, um, um, And, and that we would listen to him and, and really draw from him. Um, it, and it's hard. It's really hard sometimes that when things aren't going well. Um, so anyway, I got a, a little bit of a thing. And it, you know, this week we, we're going through push um, Sunday mornings. And uh, this is a... A little, some things on 
on weight. Um, now he's talking about um, Acts 1 where Jesus had told the, his disciples to stay in uh, Jerusalem and wait for the Holy Spirit. Um, and there's a few things here that I want to go through that, you know, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them, but I wanted to touch on them. Um, you know, again, when we talk about weight, we're not just talking about sitting around going, da, 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 wonder what's going to come through, da, 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 when's it going to be around? Da, da. No, no, we want to understand that weight means being on the edge of your seat expecting something to happen, expecting God to move, expecting that something would happen. And uh, so, and as we as we go through all these different things, understanding the weight that is weighty, and and you know, um, worrying about something isn't going to help us any. Um, so, anyway, I, I I wanted to talk about this. There's four things here that I, I want to talk about specifically. My wife would correct me on that, but I'm not going to. <laughs> one, the first one is, waiting on the Lord requires patient trust. And I'm not a, I'm not a patient man. You know, I was talking to the doctor, and he was talking about different things I can do, like when you get hungry in between meals. Because those who know me know that I'm a large man and I could use to lose weight. And he says, well, one of the things you can do is uh, um, get those shelled peanuts. You know, there's two peanuts in there, break them apart. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, nope, that's, that's too much work. Nope, nope, nope. That is way too much work. He goes, well, that's the idea. You're working at getting those peanuts out and, you know, time you eat a few of them, you get tired of it, and you're not hungry no more. And I'm like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, but anyway, um, <laughs> so, you know, waiting isn't always... Uh, easy. And, and, and sometimes, you know, we get to waiting and we finally say, you know what? I, I don't I don't need you. I, I'll do it myself. This requires us Waiting on the Lord requires us to trust Him that He's going to do it in His timetable. Um You know, and <clears throat> waiting, as it says here, waiting means that we give God the benefit of the doubt that He knows what He's doing. Waiting on God is God's way is seeing if we will trust Him before we move forward. You know, um, in my life, I've learned that people are people and they'll respond to you as people do. It's funny how I can trust them to be people. You know, in all things, it's like uh, Josiah's die. I understand full wholeheartedly why somebody would get angry. I understand why uh, why somebody would um, 
why they would gather up everything that <coughs> is part of him and take it and put it somewhere or get rid of it. Or why they just, they would have everything the way it was when he left, when he was gone. I um, understand why parents get divorced. Why they struggle. Why all these different things that happens when a child dies. I understand. But the one thing that we can't do is turn our face away from God and stop trusting Him. And <clears throat> more likely that if we turn our faces away from God in these types of situations, we didn't trust Him to begin with. The next one that we want to look at is Waiting on God reminds us that God is in control. Well, you know what? A lot of people have a hard time with that. Allowing God to be in control. Waiting on reminds me that I am not in charge. Waiting on reminds me that God, that I am not God. That, that's a big one. That's a big one. You know, Da Vinci painted a lot of people nude. And somebody asked him, you know, why, why are you doing that? And he says, I want to see how God looks at us. And, I, <laughs> and they're like, yeah, but you're not God. Um, you're not. And I want to say this to you. You're still not looking at people as God sees them. You can't. And the reason why I tell you that you can't is because God sees right through all that garbage that you put up and he sees right into your heart. Right in here. He knows when you're lying, when you don't. That whole Santa Claus thing. He knows when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows when you're been good or bad, so be good for good. I think the parents made it up so that their kids would behave, but <clears throat> God does. Everything's been written down in heaven. Do you know that? Everything that's been going, going on on this earth has been written down in heaven. Everything. Everything's being recorded. So when we get to heaven, God's not going to just rely on his memory. He's going to bring out your book, the papers of what you did in your life, which <laughs> this is going to be nothing. And, uh, matter of fact, <laughs> it may be more like this. Uh, and they're going to be put in front of you and say, explain. And I think the biggest question that's going to be coming from God is, um, what'd you do with my son? Bottom line. Because we're not in charge, see. God's in charge. And he's made it so simple that all you have to do is accept Christ. That's it. It's believing in him that he has everything for us. The next one is <coughs> waiting on the Lord allows God to do his work. God's timing is best. God is working. You know, recently we had a thing that we were trying to do and it, it failed. Up to this point, it's failed. And we were really upset about the fact that it failed. And, but then, then I looked and I realized that Maybe this was the Lord's best, and that we were only there for a short time. We did our stuff, and now somebody else has to do the rest. God's timing is the best. God sees things that we cannot see. Bottom line. 
The last one is waiting on God increases our strength. Now for this one here, I gotta look it up because it doesn't have anything more on that. I don't know why, but it doesn't. So give me a minute. There. Sometimes I struggle to remember that it is good to wait for the Lord. It isn't easy. It goes against the grain of our quick fix society. But there's a hidden benefit to waiting. In times of waiting, my soul receive, is received and the spirit is renewed. Isaiah wrote, but those whose trust in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings of eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. You know, um, it's not easy waiting on the Lord. Especially when you're sitting there and you're watching things and you're going, um, You, Lord, what am I supposed to do in the meantime? You know, I'm still here. I'm still dealing with this. I'm still... And he's like, I know, and I'll help you. I, the Lord, not me and John, I, the Lord, will help you through. Doesn't mean it's easy. It means that we need to wait. And as we pray earnestly, praying in the morning, in the night, in the middle of the day, as we go to work, as we go to the store, in the store, at work, at play, at home, sitting watching movies, we're praying and praying, Lord, move! <clears throat> we're waiting. Waiting for the Lord to move. And we're praying as hard as we can. We're pushing. We're pushing. Pray until something happens. Because the Lord knows. Alright, I hope that was good for you tonight. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, please write me. Uh, you can do it on Messenger. You can do it on Facebook. Uh, Josiah's Prayer, gmail.com. Uh, at gmail.com. That's the email. Um, I'll try to remember to put that in my contact information. Um, you can send us prayer requests, whatever. If you don't know Jesus tonight, it's a real simple prayer. Let's, let's do this real quick. If you don't know Jesus and, and you're struggling and you want to know him, it's a real quick prayer. All you got to do is repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner. I ask you to cleanse me of all my sins and become Lord of my life. I surrender my heart and my body to you, Lord. Please make have you be my Lord. That's all there is to it. And if you have done that, one, find a good church. Find a good church that preaches the gospel. Two, um, To uh, start praying, get in your Bible. I'll start reading, reading, and start reading in John. That's the book you need to read. It, it, it's the fourth gospel in the New Testament. Read John, and that's where you need to start. And uh, on the way, uh, prayers tonight. Uh, the the one prayer that I'm going to put top is praying for my. Hope she doesn't get mad at me. I don't remember his name. And uh, my phone's here somewhere. Let me see if I can bring it. His name up. But her name is Elizabeth. Be praying that the Lord would one um, touch her um, and uh, help her. His name is oh, it's her fiance. I apologize for calling your special uh, special song. Her fiance D D Donovan. And uh, 
be praying for him. He's going. He's doing the test, and um, her name is Elizabeth. Be praying for them. He he's he's very critical. He had gone through some tests. Pray that the the tests come back negative. They don't find anything, and they quickly find that it's something simple as even vitamin D. But that the Lord would heal. You know what? Just plain ordinary heal him and let him feel better. I also want you to be praying for my mom and touch them, help them. There's several babies. Uh, baby Luke, who got a liver from Josiah, be praying for him. Um, be praying for two other little babies. One's a preemie out. I'm not sure where they're at now. And another one that's really having a hard time breathing and so forth. Be praying for them. Be praying for Kim. Um, Katie and Samuel, you touch them. Lord, raise them up. Pray for Kim's uh, mother-in-law. You speak to her, help her, heal her. Uh, she has also has a friend. I should write these down before I come on, but I ain't for a um, Who has, has cancer? Is fighting cancer. So, we pray for friend uh, Kim's friend that has cancer. And there's another one that's had marriage problems and one's addicted to pray for them as well. Debbie and Stacy, Lord, pray for them. Pray, pray for my mom and dad that you would um, Lord, move upon them and my brother. Um, you know, he's like everybody else, struggling with financial issues. Um, and you can be praying for me as well. Um, although, I like to say that the, the sting of Josiah's death is still there. It is gone. But... There's times that when I'm thinking about him passing, it just, I lose my breath. Um, those of you who understand great, I'm not going to explain that anymore than that. The pain is really there. Um, let me tell you a little story. Uh, I, when I was younger and I wasn't so fat, <laughs> I used to go and get wood. Um, and I, we, well, started out with my dad. And uh, um, after a while, we'd just go get wood. That's just what we did. We did it with my dad. We loved it. And we'd have a whole crew doing it. We'd just do it for fun. A um, few people got mad at us because we had a rule that <coughs> we'll give you one load. But after that, you're going to come help us get the wood for you. You're going to be right there loading the truck up um, and getting it. You're not going to... We're not bringing you wood, free wood. We're not going to do that. And we did help some folks out. And there was times that we just gave wood out because we didn't have any place to put it. Um, but anyway, this one time I was out helping my brother out, getting wood. And uh, um, and we are out and we went to this place where you're allowed to cut down trees as long as they're dead. And they had less than 40% uh, 40 or less bark on them. If, they're, if the bark was all the way around, completely up, then you could cut them down. Even knowing that you could see that they're dead. That you weren't allowed to cut them down. Um, and we found this one that it didn't have any bark on it. It was completely dead. And uh, so we went and cut it down. It was a solid tree. Um... And we had cut a couple of them, and already we'd cut them up, but we didn't have quite have enough. And Rob didn't want to cut more than what he could haul away at that time. And so we cut it, and uh, I was cutting it down, and Josiah was with us, and Marilyn, my brother's daughter, was with us, and that. And uh, so, so here we are. I'm cutting this down, tree come down, and I had Josiah stand away so that he wouldn't get hurt, nothing would fly away, so he's further enough away. And then I cut the tree down, and it come down, wham, and crashed. But wham! Oh, Josiah, whoa, Dad, that was so cool! Man, that was magnificent, I loved it! Can we do it again? <laughs> I couldn't believe it, he was loving it. And uh, it's funny how they were playing with bark before we cut down that tree. And Marilyn, you know, this is the difference between a girl and a boy. Marilyn was building houses and stick figures out of the wood. 
Josiah was building guns and swords out of the bark. I, I don't know. I don't get it. But that's what was happening. <clears throat> so, but, you know, I just thought I'd tell you that story. Uh, but anyway, you know, so we want to keep all these prayers. If you have a prayer request, please, by messenger. The email, again, is Josiah Josiah's prayer gmail at gmail.com. And uh, if you have a prayer request, and uh, we're looking for all the prayer requests we can get and pray. Now we, it, it, we may not, if we get too many, we may not mention them all in here, but we'll be praying for them, and we can send those out as well. Uh, if you have any, and please, um, I have started putting this on Facebook. The reason why I put it on Facebook is uh, to help me out because. Um, I need to get up to a thousand subscribers and, and uh, so I need as many people problem is I don't even have a thousand friends so I don't know how I'm going to do that but we just want people to subscribe and uh, so I can get up there and we want to get these videos out and please like share on Facebook um, and let everybody know and, and let it get it out there and if you have any prayer requests let us know so so anyway and Lord uh, as we, uh, I just thought of this, Lord, we want to pray about the elections, Lord. We pray for our president. We pray that you would continue to move and work in our lives, Lord, and help this country. And we pray all that in Jesus' name. Amen. So, it was good for you to tune in. Again, please share, like, uh, subscribe. Hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell. You want to do all. And then uh, that would be awesome. And uh, but anyway, for now, this is Pastor John signing off, saying I hope to see you Sunday. Talk to you later.